Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your YouTube owner for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room under construction. We've got the wall painted. I should say the wall is painted, the ceiling painted, and we're looking for some kind of flooring to put down before we bring in the desks. This device is a game changer for ham radio operators. It's in a black box. It has an LCD screen, a touch screen, and it does some really neat things. Stay tuned, and right after this, I'll open up the black box and show you what's inside. Whiskey 6 Lima calling CQ, hello CQ. CQ calling CQ, hello CQ. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf. Inside this black box is a Nano VNA, a vector network analyzer, and it does bunches of things. I'm going to take the cover off. Um, I put it in a box because I was afraid I was going to break the thing, uh, drop it. So I've got um, the two coax connectors out the front. This little guy, and with some really neat software um, written by a guy in Africa, you can do some really neat things. For me, this is reminiscent of when um, we started to use, <laughs> it goes back a ways, SWR meters. SWR meters existed, but became really popular in the 1960s. And I think Heathkit had a lot to do with that. A Heathkit, Lafayette, Allied, Calrad, a bunch of companies had uh, SWR meters. Prior to that, we would just put up an antenna and cut it the right length and use it. Then we had SWR meters and we could take a reading. And a lot of us decided that if the SWR was one-to-one, -one, that's where the antenna was resonant. That may or may not be the case, as, as it turns out. This device has a bunch of functions. I'm familiar with only part of how it works and some of the things that it does. For example, um, you can look at an antenna, find the resonant frequency. Uh, you can measure the length of coax, which we're going to do. You can measure the loss in the coax, which is hugely important at various frequencies. Uh, we're going to measure the loss in some coax connectors yet again, and I'll explain why when we get there. Um, on the floor is um, a bunch of coax connector, coax cables, and they go up into the attic. I did not have the time to really test the cables. I'm not exactly sure which one is which at this point, so I'm going to hook this up. It will tell me the length and the loss, and that is really neat. Um, this thing on Amazon is about $50. I think I got this one off of eBay for even a little bit less. Um, I think the device, the construction of the device, I believe to be a little bit fragile, so I stuck it in this plastic box. Um, the software is free. It's unbelievably good. It does a bunch of things. And as I said, I'm still learning how to use it. Um, if you haven't had the opportunity to see one of these um, in person, if you have a neighbor that's got one, go take a look at it. Uh, as I said, it's for $50, it can't be beat. I have had VNAs before. I've had some that were fairly expensive uh, in the range of several hundred dollars. By that, I mean uh, five to eight hundred dollars. This guy with the $50 price tag, okay, maybe 60 in some places. And the free software is just as accurate as devices that cost a couple thousand bucks. Um, let's first measure the known length of something. See, oh, do it with a tape measure and then see how this device uh, measures the same thing. Now, this is this speaks metric, so we're going to have to convert meters to feet, but we can do that pretty easily. Uh, we can use Google or any number of sources. Um, so let's go do that. Let's take a look. Let's see. And by the way, this, this one is battery powered, but I'm going to hook it up to a, um, the USB device. We'll, we'll power it. Let's go do two things with this. Uh, let's measure loss in feed lines and the length of some feed lines. We'll do some coax that we know the length of and we'll do some that we don't know the length of and we'll look at the loss at various frequencies. And I can decide whether or not 
the cable that I've got up in the attic, whether or not it's worth connecting to an antenna. It may be so lossy that it isn't worth it. Okay, I'm going to swap um, this location for a computer desk and a screen capture. Okay, so let's start up um, Nano VNA Saver. Okay, get my software going here and connect to the Nano VNA. Um, the program scanned and found the Nano VNA on COM3. So connect. It is connected. Um, all right, so I'm going to do the sweep uh, 10 to 20 megahertz. Uh, let's do 10, 10 steps. That's plenty. And first thing we're going to do is run the calibration program. So the calibration assistant uh, will ask us for a short, open, and a load on the first connector. So let's go through that process. Okay, attach the short. I'm going to say okay. Okay, please connect the open. I'm going to do that next. Okay, the open is connected, so we're going to say okay. Okay, please connect a load. I've done that, so I'm going to click okay. Then after that runs, we're going to tell it that's the end of the calibration. Uh, steps and see if we can get some results. Okay, it said uh, the required steps for uh, port number one are done. And I'm going to say apply. Okay, next let's run some known coax and see what it looks like. So I'm going to grab a roll of something and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to connect uh, what I have marked as 65 feet of RG213. Make sure the connector is tight, and let's sweep this and see what it says. As I said, there are a lot of things that the Nano VNA does. This is just a couple of them. Um, its analysis of antennas is really a great thing, and we'll do that in, in the next episode on the Nano VNA. All right, this is just about done doing the sweep. We're going to click on TDR. It's estimated the length at uh, 64 feet, which is about what I had. Loss measured at 14 megahertz was 1.2 dB. And that loss is the loss for a pulse going out and coming back. So the loss of the coax would be half that amount. So about um, 0.6 dB. I have a loss calculator set up from... Uh, KV5R, which is really a nifty one. Um, RG213, uh, let's say 65 feet, or is it 64 feet? Close enough. 1 to 1 SWR, 100 watts going into it. The loss with uh, build an RG2, um, RG213 would be 0.47 or 0.5 dB. And if you put 100 watts into it, about 90 watts would get to the antenna. So the loss of RG213 Belden high quality stuff would be 0.5 dB. And that's what we measured. So the coax that I have is uh, apparently pretty good. Um, I've got 75 feet of RG8X. Let's measure that and see what, uh, what it comes up with. Uh, again, we had, we measured um, about 0.6, the building would be 0.5, so close enough, especially at um, at 20 meters. So I'm going to connect 75 feet of RG8X. We'll see what that does. All right, the coax is connected, so let's set this guy up. Um, RG8X, velocity factor uh, is 0.82. Let's go ahead and sweep the coax again from 10 to 20 megahertz, which is what uh, I calibrated earlier. Again, I'm going to click on TDR and bring that up on the screen. And it's estimated length at uh, 77 feet. This is new coax off the shelf, 
measured at the manufacturer as 75 feet, could be a hair longer. Uh, loss was 2.2 dB, so half that, because again we're measuring the pulse going on and coming back, would be 1.1. The loss calculator from KV5R for RG8X. Um, 75 feet, 100 watts, calculate. Um, for building uh, RG8X, it would have been 0.8. So there's a slight difference, not much. It may be a greater, it would be a greater difference, I'm sure, at 2 meters or 440. And I don't recommend using RG8X that frequency anyway. So if you put 100 watts into the coax and you have oh, um, that loss, uh, about 83 watts would get to the antenna. All right, so we found that the nano VNA was accurately measuring the loss and the length of the coax. I have an unknown. I just want to quickly measure that, see what it looks like. It's one of the many cables that goes up into the attic, and I believe this one is about 65 feet long, so I'm going to connect to that. Okay, I've connected the RG213, one of the ones that I was able to get to run from the um, radio room at the front of the house to the rear of the house. I believe this is the one that runs the whole length. And again, we're going to sweep, sweep it from 10 to 20 to start. I'm just not sure the length. It could be 50 to 70 feet. Uh, looks like it's going to be... Uh, in that neighborhood and the most important thing to me at this point is what is the loss on that run that coax is used and oh, this coax is used I don't know how old it is okay the TDR says it is get the right coax on there Yep, 64 feet, uh, velocity factor 0.66 for that kind of coax. Um, measured loss was 1.2 dB, and again, that's gone out and coming back, so 0.6 dB. So for a coax cable of 64 feet long on the KV5R, just to see what a uh, building would be, RG213, Approximately 65 feet, 14 megahertz, 1 to 1 SWR, 100 watts going into it. The building would have a loss of about half a dB, 0.48, so 0.5, and would deliver about 90 watts to the coax. So this, this would be the loss with new coax at about 0.5. And we measured uh, 0.6, so this cable is good. All right. That's a nano VNA, just two of the modes or functions that it does. There are many more, and I'm going to discover them as I go along. The next one I'm going to use is measuring antennas and the uh, impedance uh, reactants and get the um, uh, resonant frequency. So that's going to be uh, fun to do. If this device only measured the coax and gave me the loss, it'd be worth the $50, but it does much more, so we're going to find out about that as we go along. If you have not subscribed, please click that box. would appreciate it. Um, as I get the radio room set up, I'll be doing many more videos. The room is uh, being painted right now, and next thing tomorrow will be um, the floor and dealing with the uh, with that issue and some irregularities in the floor, but I think we can get it done in a day or two. Anyway, thanks for watching. 73M Jim W6LG, your YouTube Elmer for Ham Radio Basics 73. Bye bye.